Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we are going to do our 50 MCQs of Kurukshetra magazine from June to July. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Hansa Nora Sama and I've been a mentor for Unabad Agriculture and Rural Development. Right. So if you guys are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as you can press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel. And if you guys have liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button out here and uh, give us a support. And do comment if you guys also have an, a, any more doubts or any more uh, queries also, right? Um, you can also join our Telegram group. Um, the description is down in the given in the description below. And you can just click on the description and you can you will be directed to our telegram group so that you can if you have any queries if you guys want to ask any questions then you can directly contact the mentor as well as you can also uh, have a chat and ask about your doubts along with your fellow students as well um, so i'm gonna do 50 mcqs today and let's uh, move on to our first question right so uh, as usual i'm not going to uh, explain in detail uh, because it's a lot of questions so we have to, we are running out of time we'll be running out of time later on so in that way i'll just try to have a shorter version of uh, discussion of each questions all right so the first question is um select which of the following is a true based on sustainable agriculture the first uh a statement says it generally avoids the use of synthetically uh, compounded fertilizers, pesticides, growth regulators, and livestock feed. And the second statement says uh, that the soil management through uh, conservation, agriculture, organic farming, integrated nutrient management, on farm residue management, and third one, safe crop management, uh, includes right of sowing, cultivation of suitable crops, and varieties and rotation. So uh, the options given here are one and two only, number B says two and three only, number C is three only. We have D which says one, two, and four, sorry, uh, one, two, and three, yeah. and then we have number E which says all of the above. Okay, so the right answer for this is all of the above, right? All of the above statements are basically true on sustainable agriculture. So what is sustainable agriculture? Basically, sustainable agriculture, they may, uh, they aim for a holistic development of the whole agriculture so that we won't, we won't be um, using up or there won't be any uh, excess use of chemical, any use of chemical fertilizer so that it can be we can will be able to sustain it for the future and it also has uh, more of a maintained balance ecological balance to it okay so sustainable agriculture is the form of an agriculture which basically me aimed at meeting the needs of the present generation without endangering the resources based on the future generation so we have to take the future uh, resources and the future generations at hand as well so that we don't want to deplete all those natural resources that we have in order so that in order uh, to fulfill the needs of the present generation right so this is what an, a sustainable agriculture is okay i hope this is clear and now let's go to another uh, question uh, so what is the average rainfall that india receives annually all right so the options given here are uh, five less than 500 millimeter uh, we have B, which is 500 to 950, C, C is 950 to 110, uh, 1,100, sorry, and D is 1,100 to 1,500, and number E is more than uh, 1,500, okay? So the right answer for this is 950 till 1,100, right? So basically, in India, they receive an approximately uh, rainfall of about 1,085 1, in meter, okay? And so basically nearly three-fourths of the total rainfall in the, which is received in India, the southwestern monsoon activity, which is in the month of June and July, right? So these are the southwest monsoon. Uh, and a total utilizable uh, water resources in the country, they have been estimated to be about around 1,132 billion cubic meters, okay? So out of this, around 690 a billion cubic meters they are from the surface and around 433 they are from the ground water okay so these are some of the stats um, uh, so you can remember the annual 
rainfall of India as well and just a bit of this okay uh, let's go to another question so which of the uh, methods are efficient water management practices okay so the first option here is land laser leveling we have proper irrigation uh, scheduling we have third which is contour tillage and the fourth which is broad uh, bed planting okay so the options given here are one and two only number b is two and three only number c is one two and three only and number d is uh two and four only okay uh so the right answer for this is all of the above as all of these above uh, methods these are good or these are inefficient water management uh, methods or these are in, uh, practices which are followed for efficient water management okay so all these statements or all the practices are true based on that um, okay now next uh, move on to another question select the correct statement on check basin or water strip irrigation method okay so you have to select the correct statement based on this tool uh, based on this irrigation method okay the first one here is this is a type of surface irrigation okay the statement two says it is the easiest and a very least costly method um, number third says which is highly efficient method of irrigation uh, the options given here are one only number b is one and two only number c is two and three only number d says not the above and number uh, e says all of the above okay so the right answer for this is one and two only as these uh, check basin and water uh, strip method these are not highly efficient okay so uh, let us check into what this uh, check basin, basin and uh, water strip irrigation are so this is a type of a surface irrigation it means that the irrigation is over the surface on the surface of the land okay right above the soil so um and the surface irrigation they involves application of water by gravity to the surface of the field so basically they just pour the uh, water on the surface of the soil okay so uh, it is it's not like the drip irrigation or it's not like sprinkle where it's like the if they don't give irrigation from the top but just they just have they just flow out the water on the surface of the soil so this is the uh basically this is the basic idea of what a surface irrigation are okay and uh in check basin and strip water they will usually have a border or a main channel right so from where the water will go and from there it'll just go to every uh, basin or every uh, uh borders where the water will flow and it'll just irrigate on the surface okay so that is what this check basin and water strip irrigations are and this is it says that it is an easiest and it is also least costly method right so it's not labor uh, more it's not laborious it's easy because you just have to uh, you know uh, switch on the water and then you'll just flow on the surface of the water so you don't have any uh, it's not technical as well so it is uh, but the one thing here is that it is advantages here is that it is highly inefficient and it only uh, about only 20 percent of the water is taken up with a plant all right so around 80 percent there's an 80 percent lot so only 20 percent is taken up by the plant okay so these are something on uh, this check basin and water strip irrigation uh, next question here is the irrigation method which delivers flows into individual long furrows okay so these will be more than around 25 meter up to 200 meter uh, so these are moved in an intermittent fashion are predetermined on and off time cycles uh, which can be around 5 to 10 minutes the design duration of irrigation so you need to select so this statement here uh, it's just a definition of these one of these uh, irrigation method okay so you need to identify which irrigation method this uh, is describing about all right so uh the options given here are we have uh furrow irrigation we have a surge flow irrigation we have sub uh, surface drip irrigation we have sprinkler irrigation and we have drip irrigation okay so the right answer for this is search flow irrigation guys so the search flow irrigation these are uh, the better type of irrigation where there there is an intermediate application of water in a series of on and off modes okay so at one point they'll be like um, switching it on and then after some time they're switching it off so uh, i think that even the timeline has also been given here with a duration of five to ten minutes right so the on and off is given a duration of five to ten minutes and these are 
more. Um, so basically, this has the potential of reducing insect and percolation losses, and also increases the irrigation efficiencies and conserve the irrigation water. All right. So and there's also an excessive water intake and the percolation also major limitations for irrigations through furrows and strip water. So these are just uh, comparing it to the furrow and uh, water strip as this surge flow irrigation method, which is way more efficient uh, method of irrigation. Okay, so I have this is clear. Now let's go to another question where uh, you have to read the following and select the correct statement on a, part, a partial root drying, all right? So partial root drying is a new irrigation technique, which is first applied to the gray veins that subjected one half of the root system to drying or drying conditions while the other is irrigated or it is wet, right? So, and the sweated and the dry sides of the root system, these are alternate on a cycle of 10 to 20 days. Uh, there's a partial root drying, they use the biochemical responses of the plants to water stress to achieve balance between vegetative and reproductive growth. Okay, guys, so uh, the options given here are one only, number two is three only, number C is one and three only, number D is all of the above, and number E is none of the above. Okay, so the right answer is all of the above, as all of the above statements are true on this partial root drying irrigation method. As you can see here in this picture on the right hand side, right? So half of the uh, so a half of the root zone is wetted, which is uh, directed in the blue color, and the brown color is the dried one, all right? So, and this um, is basically what a partial root zone drying irrigation method is, okay? This is basically a new method, all right? So let's see why the statement number, um, statement number, which one is it? Statement number two was wrong, right? So basically the statement number two was wrong because it, the system the, or the alternate uh, root system uh, cycle for this root system is basically about 7 to 14 days it's not from 1 to 20 days okay so remember it's been between a week and a two weeks okay so in that duration it is usually irrigated okay so I have this is uh, here for you all and now let's go to another question where we have to select the correct statement on conservation of water all right so the first thing here is that so basically these are the uh, statements given here are the methods, all right? So you need to identify whether this statement allowed to this conservation tillage or the statement uh, to mulch is correct or, you know, wrong, all right? So uh, the first statement here is this conservation tillage that includes zero tillage and retention of the crop residuals on the soil surface of planting, okay? And number second statement says, Mulching with power residues on the soil surface, they uh, shade the soil and slows water overflow, right? And number three is addition of clay or hydrophilic compound decreases the water retention capacity of the soil and controls deep percolation, all right? So the options given here are number A is one and two only, number B is two only, number C is two and three, number D is none of the above, and number E is all of the above. Right, so the right answer for this is number A, which is one and two only. All right, so number statement number three is wrong as when you um, have this additional, um, sorry, so when you have this addition of clay or hydrophilic compounds, there is an increase in the water retention capacity. So it's written decrease, but there's actually an increase in the water retention capacity. And so therefore, when the, there is a higher water retention capacity, then it will definitely control the deep percolation of the water in the soil as well. And so in that way, we can conserve the water and there won't be any leaching and there won't be any water overflowing. All right. So this is uh, so this statement number three is wrong, right? As it increases the water retention capacity. And now let's go to another question. Uh, which of the following statements are incorrect on E9, all right? So uh, first statement says it was launched on 14th April 2016. Number th second says th three modules of ENAM was launched on April and 2020. Uh, these models are FPO module, which is, uh, and we also have logistic module and warehouse based E and WR trading, right? And the third statement states interoperability between REMS, a unified, which is a unified market portal, right? And ENAM portal was launched on January 2020. 
Okay, so uh, the options given here are one and two only. We have uh, uh, B which says two only, number C is three only, number D is, uh, number D is none of the above, and number E is all of the above. Right, so the right answer for this is number A, which is, uh, sorry, it's so we have to select the incorrect, right? So the incorrect statement here is three only, as uh, it wasn't launched on January 2020, but it was actually launched on the May of 2020. So on May uh, 2020, interoperability between REMS, which is an implied market portal, and ENAM portal, it was launched, okay? So basically in this module, farmer and traders across REMS of Karnataka and ENAM platform can conduct inter-platform trade to access more markets per trade using interoperability features and vice versa, okay? So these are something on uh, ENAM, right? So these are the latest updates on ENAM, so this is very important questions can also come from here as well okay and guys if you guys are learning for this for the first time don't forget to uh, you know keep a notebook, notebook by your side and so that as I'm explaining things as we're discussing the questions you'll be able to jot down the important points as well okay all right so let's go to another question select a correct statement okay so according to the food and agriculture organization globally irrigated agriculture represents about 20 percent of the total cultivated land but it only contributes to about 40% of the total food produced, right? And second says, presently, the irrigation of water accounts for about 80% of the available water. And number third says, the FAO estimates that over the last century, the global water withdrawal grew for about five times faster than the population, all right? So uh, the options given here are number one, number A is one only. We have B, which says one and two only. Number C is two and three only. Number D is all of the above, and number E is none of the above. So the right answer for this is one and two only, as the statement number six, um, uh, statement number two is wrong, right? Uh, actually, so, so the statement actually here, the statement number three is wrong. So I made a mistake in the uh, in this section. Oh, sorry, it's correct. So statement number three is wrong, and so basically the FAO they estimated that the over the last century, the global water withdrawal is actually not five times, but uh, uh, 1.7 times faster than the population, okay? And so this actually aggravates the concern of uh, the sustainable water use as a demand for agriculture and industrial and domestic uses, they are also increasing. So, you know, the water consumption will definitely increase. And so there has been a scare or there has been a uh, concern over this water use, right? So statement number three is incorrect, okay? Uh, another question here, which of the following they are related to the smart agriculture, okay? So number A is autonomous swarms, number B is carbitation, number C is pesticide spray, number D is mulching, number E is bunting. Uh, the right answer for this is autonomous swarms, okay? So when you're talking about the smart agriculture, in smart agriculture is more like a precision agriculture where you use the high-end technology or the AI or the robotics uh, so that you can have a more efficient agriculture system, okay? Um, all right, so let's just talk about what is autonomous swarms there. So autonomous swarms, they basically, they combine the technology of the swarm robots, all right? So with the uh, blockchain-based backend, so basically backends, these are database which are, are connected to these robots and, and that way they'll be functioning um, accordingly, right? So these are well maintained for the functioning properly, right? So the swarm robotics, they involve multiple uh, copies of same robot robots and working independently and parallel to achieve basically the goal to a larger cost, right? So there, due to this uh, autonomous form, there will be um, this pesticidal and fertilizer application will also be uh, more sparingly done, right, to all the plants and the planting as well as the harvesting uh, can be given uh, special and an individual attention to each plant, right? And so this, uh, which cannot, which this whole thing, it couldn't be achieved with a large machine, but due to these autonomous swarms or these or these swarm robotics, we, we are able to achieve such 
things, right? So in that way, this approach will produce a greater yield at a reduced cost while raising the quality of the crop as well. All right, so these are something on the autonomous swans. Now let's go to another question where we have to select the incorrect statement on water use efficiency. The country reports only about 38% water use in fields of agriculture. Number two says conventional surface irrigation provides about 60 to 70% efficiency. Number three is higher efficiency of up to 70 to 80% with sprinkler and 90% with drip irrigation can be achieved. Uh, the options given here are one only, number B is two only, number C is two and three, and number D is none of the above, and number E is all the above. The right answer for this is none of the above, as none of the above statements are incorrect. As all of the statements are true on water use efficiency, all right? So uh, try to remember the data and the stats in this um, statements, all right? Okay, now let's go to another question. Which of this following can be used for acid reclamation? So this we have to reclaim the acid soil. So which of this following is good for reclaiming the acid soil, all right? A is NaCl, we have sodium carbonate, we have lime, we have organic compost, and the last one is irrigation, right? So um, the right answer for this is lime. So lime is actually used to reduce the uh, acidity in the soil, okay? So lime application to the soil with, a, uh, with high pH flavors, more intensive, and the rooting, and there will be a better crop development as also. It will contribute to improved soil aggregation, and thus it will produce some increase in the soil water availability as well. So this uh, reclamation of lime helps in soil reclamation, and therefore it will uh, directly help in the soil water conservation and soil water availability to the plants as well, right? So I have this is clear. And now let's go to another question. Uh, which of the following countries is the biggest user of brown water? Okay, so you have to choose the, the country which is the bigger or the highest user of brown water. The options are China, we have USA, we have India, UK, and Philippines. All right, so the right answer, guys, for this is uh, India, right? So India is the highest or the biggest user of brown water. Right, so according to the report, India extracts more groundwater than China and the U.S., the next two biggest pools of the groundwater combined, right? And in the year of 2014, there was a report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Water Resources. Uh, they highlighted that about 89% of extracted groundwater in India is used for irrigation, which making it the highest category user in the what country so uh, you can see that around 89 percent of the groundwater water is used for irrigation which means uh, for the agriculture purpose right so highest percentage of the groundwater water is going on agriculture in india which is about around 89 percent just for irrigation okay so i have this is clear and now let's go to another question so we already have to read the following statement and you have to choose the correct options all right um so uh, in 2016, the Union government launched a scheme with the dual aim of Karakate Kopani. So this is on Pradhan Mandri Krishi Sanjaya Yojana, okay? So you have to select the right answer. Uh, PMKS5 was formulated by amalgamating the schemes like Accelerated Irrigation Benefit Program, Integrated Water Management Program, and the On-Farm Water Management Program. And the scheme has been divided into 99 prioritized projects. And the options given here are one and two only, number B is two and three, number C is one and three, number D is two and three, number E is all of the above. The right answer is all of the above, as all of the above statements. These are correct on Pradhan Mantri, Krishi, Sijai, Yoshna, okay? So, uh, so try to remember all these, all right? Okay, so let's go to another question. Uh, so which of the following is true on groundwater crisis in India? Okay, so uh, first statement says in 2018, Niti Aayog, they came up with this made in composite water program index, which is also known as CWMI. So according to the report, around 21 major uh, cities, they are racing to reach zero groundwater levels by 2020, which is affecting around about 100 million people. Right, so in India, the per capita annual water availability has declined to about 1,508 cubic meter in 2020. Uh, the options given here are one only, number B is one and two, number C is three, number D is all of the above, and non number E is none of the above. 
The right answer is one and two only as the statement number three is wrong on the founding of the crisis in India. So basically in 2018, this Niti Aayog, they came up with this made in composite water management index. So this is the first ever effort to the fact for the water crisis availability, which has been scientifically done in India, right? So according to the report, 21 major cities, they raised to reach about uh, zero groundwater levels by 2020, right, which will affect 100 million people. And basically in India, the per capita annual water availability declined from 1,508 cubic meter in 2014. So it is estimated to decline further by about 1,465 cubic meter by 2025 and about 1,235 cubic meter by 2050, all right? So these are some options. And now let's go to another question. As per World Bank report on groundwater, how much percentage of the water is used for agriculture or used in agriculture, okay? So uh, the options given here are, number A is 50%, number B is 65%, number C is 80%, number D is 90%, number E is 70%. The right answer for this is 90%, around 90% of the water is used by the agriculture in uh, India, right? So as per India, we draw of about 761 billion cubic meter brown water in 2018. Okay, so this is a report from 2018, out of which around two 688 billion cubic meter, so which makes it about around 90%. These are used for agriculture, all right? So this is something about the groundwater crisis. And now let's go to another question, where how much groundwater is extracted by India alone globally? All right, so number A is 10%, number B is 20%, number C is 15%, number D is 30, number E is 50%, okay? So the right answer for this is 25%, as India uses about 25% of the groundwater extracted globally, right? So, and it receives only uh, about 4% of the global precipitation and it ranks like 133 in the world in terms of water availability per person per annum, right? So the rank is only about 133, right? So that's a very low rank, which is in terms of the water availability for each person. All right, so now let's go to another question. What is the net irrigated area in India? I think all of you guys will be well aware of this question, right? And the answers as well. Uh, the options given here are 50 million hectare. Number B is 80 million hectare. Number C is 68 million hectare. Number D, 53. Number E is 74, right? The right answer for this is 68 million hectare. So in agriculture, is about 48% of the net zone area. The net irrigated area is about 16.8 million hectares and they contribute to about 60% of the India's food grain production. All right, so I got here. Now let's go to another question and on participatory irrigation management. And the first one is on control water delivery, tail and water deprivation, seepage loss, siltation, water logging, and soil salinity are the problems in irrigation in India. So this PM, uh, PIM refers to the participation of water resources, the farmers in the management of the irrigation systems. And number third is PM reforms uh, leads to irrigation management transfer. Uh, options are one only, we have one and three, we have three only, we have one and three only, and all of the above, right? The right answer is all of the above, as all of the above statements out here, these are all correct, okay? So the next question here, we have to select the true statement on PIM again, all right? So in India, 20 states have uh, either enacted exclusive legislation or amended their legislation acts for involvement of the farmers in irrigation management. And this command area development and water management work, they are basically being implemented in 99 prioritized accelerated irrigation benefit projects. And we also have participation of the women in the management of the resources water resources is ensured through the membership in the WUAs, right? So the options given here are one and one and two, E is two and three, number C is one and three, number D is all the above, and number E is now the above, okay? The right answer for this is two and three, as in the first statement is wrong, 
as in India, only about 16 states, they have either enacted exclusively exclusive legislation or amended their irrigation acts for involvement of the farmers in irrigation management. Hence, statement number one is wrong, okay? Right, so next go to another question. How much percentage of the area in, in India is under rainfed agriculture? Right, so we have to just have to select the uh, percentage of area under rainfed. So A is 60%, number B is 55, number C is 51, number D 49, number E is 53. Right answer is sorry, uh, it's 60, it's about 60%. Uh, <clears throat> so the right answer is 51%, okay? <clears throat> about around 80% of the current water use is drawn by agriculture and irrigated accounts for about 49% of the 140 million of the agricultural land in India. And the remaining 51.2% is rain fed but accounts for nearly about 40% of the country's total food production. Okay, and another one here is when will Jal Shakti Abhyan launched? Um, so the options given here are 2016, number B is 2019, number C is 2018, number D is 2015, number E is 2017. Right, so right answer for this is <clears throat> 2019. So Jal Shakti Abhyan, it was launched by the Ministry of Jal Shakti in the year of 2019, all right? So basically, this is a campaign, a scheme for uh, water conservation and water security to the country uh, through collaborative efforts of various ministries of the government of India as well as the state governments. So these are, the focus of this campaign is on the water stress uh, districts as well as the water stress blocks in the <clears throat> country, all right? So this is something about Jal Shakti Abhyan, and now let's move on to another question, where the Prime Minister appealed to all the states to generate maximum community participation for Jal Jivan mission in the form of Jan Andolan to achieve the target of functional hassle tap connection by which of the following year, all right? So we have to select the year, all right? <clears throat> number A is 2025, number B is 2022, Number C is 2024, number D 2030, and number E is 2023. Uh, the right answer is 2024. So by the year of 2024, uh, the government. <coughs> so by the year of 2024, this prime minister they appealed that they will have a maximum. They will try to generate a maximum community participation in the, uh, in way of or in the form of Jan Andolan. All right. Okay. And uh, so let's talk about this Jivan mission, Jal Jivan mission, that is a centrally gov central government initiative under the Ministry of Jal Shakti, right? So it aims to ensure uh, piped water for every household in India, all right? And so this government, uh, so of this government of India, they has reconstructed and subsumed the National Rural Drinking Water Program into Jal Jivan mission to provide functional households have connection to every Households that is which tagline per gurnal sejil. All right, so this is the tagline for it, and so through this, they're trying to have this um, water connection for each and every household in the rural the country, especially in the rural area. Right, okay, so which of the following statement is true on monitoring of the Pradhanamandri Krishi Sanchaya Yojana? The monitoring at the national level is done by the National Executive Committee under the chairmanship of the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog and Interministerial and National Steering Committee under the chairmanship of the Prime Minister. They oversee the program implementation and allocation of resources and at the state level by the state level sanction committee chaired by the Chief Secretary of the Representative States. Uh, number statement uh, options are one and two, B is two and three, Number C is three only, number D is one and three, and number E is all of the above, okay? So the statement uh, number three is the only correct statement out here. And now let's just check out why all the, the number one and number two statements are wrong. So basically at the national level, so the international, uh, the inter National Steering Committee, which is under the prime, uh, chairmanship of the Prime Minister, they, they will be 
they are uh, basically working will be working at the national level okay but if it's under uh, for the implementation as well as the allocation of the resources then it is under the national executive committee which is under this NPIO, right and at the state level by the state that is done by the state's uh, level sanctioning committee which is chaired by this chief secretary right so these are the monitor or the uh, monitoring group or the parties for this scheme all right so i hope that's clear and now let's go to another question where when was mn Vega first initiated number a is 2006 number b 2005 number c 2007 number d 2010 and number e is 2004 okay so this is a quite easy question so the right answer for this is 2005 so it is initiated in september of 2005 it is an entitlement based employment generation scheme right which aims at enhancing the livelihood and economic security of all the rural people all across the country and one thing here that you guys need to really remember here is that it is the it's currently the world's largest public work program all right so this is a very important statement okay so this is something about M Rega. and now let's go to another question when was this P pm kisan saman Nidhi yojana launched right so the options given here are 2018 number b 2019 number c 2020 number D is 2016 and number E is 2017. So the right answer for this yes, is uh, February 24, 2019, okay? So in the year of 2019, this PMP Sound was launched. So basically this is a centrally uh, central sector scheme. So 100% will be coming from the government of India from Central, right? And it's implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So this PM Kisan is actually first implemented in uh, by the government of Telangana as this right to bundle scheme, right? So after that, you know, they made it, uh, they applied it all over with India and became PM Kisan scheme. And under this, all the small and the marginal farmers, they will be provided an income support of about 6,000 per year and three installments, which will be deposited directly to their bank accounts. So they'll be getting a fixed um, deposit or in, or, in, uh, or income support of about 6,000 per year and which will be given to them in three installments, okay? So which will be in a three times, right, in a uh, year. All uh, right, so I hope this is clear. And now let's go to another question where rural India constitutes over how much percentage of the India's population? Okay, so the options given here are number A is one only, number uh, B is 40 to 50%, and number, e, number C is 80%, number D is 30%, number E is 55%. The right answer for this is 65%, so about 65% of the total population in India is from rural India, right? So 54.3% of the household of the rural India, they get employed in agriculture, and which is can be either self-employed or they work as a casual laborers, right? So which is more than 40, more than half uh, percent of the people, they are engaged in agriculture or as casual laborers, right? So this is clear. Um, now let's go to another question, where is like the correct statement on Sukanya Smith Yojana? So first statement says that it's a small scale savings scheme uh, which aimed at meeting the financial needs of education and marriage of a girl child. It was initiated as a part of government's Bethi Bajao Bethi Padao mission. And number third is it is launched in the year of 2016. Uh, the options given here are number one is number A is one only, number B is one and two, number C one and three, number D is none of the above, and number E is all of the above. Okay, so the right answer is all of the above. So basically this scheme, it is a small scale saving scheme, especially for the girls, all right? So for the girl child. So this is to meet up the financial uh, security or like a financial insurance for the education as well as for the marriage of a girl child. So this carries the highest tax-free return with sovereign's guarantee and comes up with exempt, uh, exempt, exempt status, right? So it was initiated as a part of the government's Beti Bajao Beti Padao mission, all right? So this is something about the scheme. And now let's get to another question where Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yoja is related to which of the following? Okay, number A is financial inclusion. Number B is personal accident insurance. Number C is pension. Number D is education. Number E is for the underprivileged. Right, so the right answer for this is number B, which is pension, personal 
accident insurance, all right? So basically this scheme, it helps provide people with a personal accident insurance cover. So it is available to people from the age between 18 to 70 years of age with anyone who has a bank account, right? So it was first launched in the year of 2015 on May, all right? So this is something about this Pradhan Mantri, Sudakshya Bhima Yojana. Um, next question, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana is available for which of the following age groups? Um, a is 15 to 25 years, B is 18 to 50, uh, A, C is 18 to 60, number, four, number D is 40 to 60, number E is 25 to 50. The right answer for this is uh, 18 to 50 years of age. So this Pradhan Mantri uh, Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana it is a government scheme, so for life, this is a government life insurance scheme, right? So which is available for the group of people or the age group between 18 to 50 years of age. And the risk coverage under this scheme is for two lives in case of death of the insured due to any reason, all right? So these are something on this Pradhan Mantri <coughs> Jal Jeevan, sorry, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, all right? Um, <coughs> Let's go to another question. So we have to state which of the following is true in the social security. Okay, so first state says insurance and pensions are a form of social security measures. Number three is social security can indirectly influence the domestic demand and facilitate growth of the economy. And the third one says social security and in India is critical. Options given here are one, Number B is 1 and 2, number C is 2 and 3, number D is none of the above, and number E is all of the above, right? So, right, the, all of the above statements are true. So now let us look at what this social security is. So social security, it is basically defined as a provision of protection for individuals as well as for the households, which ensure uh, their health and income, especially in case of age, employment, sickness, invalidity, work, anything related to all the social matters, right? So this is what the social security is. And basically, the social security, it helps uh, in reduction of the poverty and inequality. And so therefore, it will also help in increasing of the inclusive growth as well. Um, this social security, uh, it also affects the growth of the uh, economy by influencing the domestic demand. And the workforce with the higher social security could also contribute to a higher growth and which in turn will definitely help in the demand of the economy, right? And so this, uh, basically unlike these developed countries, the state, the India, it, it is more critical in India as it does not have a more automated economic stabilizers, such as a universal, we don't have a universal health coverage or we don't have an unemployment scheme as well. So in such scenario, this social security will is actually very uh, critical and therefore it applies in India as well, right? So these are something on the social security, right? I hope this is clear. And well, guys, that's all for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session with me. And if you guys have liked the session, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And you can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel to get more updated um, notices on exams as well. And you can also have try out our telegram group you can join the group the description will be given the uh description or the link is given in the description below right so and if you guys have any more doubts or if you guys have any more queries don't forget to hit it uh, drop in the comment section uh i will reply to your doubts and queries as well and we'll be meeting for the next session with uh, another session for yojana magazine we'll try to solve 50 questions as usual and that's all for today guys thank you so much and i hope you guys have a great day